Now presenting Minutes with Michael, with your host, Michael. Well, good evening and welcome back to Minutes with Michael. A um, couple updates for you. Uh, one, we had, a, I think, a, a pretty cool uh, church non-meeting meeting. You know, we got to listen to Pastor Kevin as he preached. Um, and one of the big things I got out of it was keeping things simple and the way that God delivered the most profound truths in a simple way. And then in the morning meeting, we touched on the nine blessings known as the Beatitudes and uh, talked about what they mean, what they don't mean. And uh, studying for that and learning about that was pretty revolutionary in my own mind. So I hope that uh, if you haven't had the opportunity to uh, listen to any preaching today, that you might touch base with uh, our YouTube page, uh, Thompson Baptist Church, or our Facebook page, Thompson Baptist Church. And you can find that. You'll identify it by the tree logo. And I'll put the tree up in a little clip art so that you can see that. And you'll be able to find our channel and be able to watch something. And hopefully it'll be a blessing to you. Uh, a little noisier. We're doing some laundry. Things getting done. Uh, it's the evening and the kids are in bed. And you might even hear some of their bedtime music playing. Um, but uh, a little bit of a later um, uh, start on the Moments with Michael today. But I just wanted to touch base with you. And, and, uh, and uh, my book recommendation for tonight is actually my stand for my laptop because it's so big and it is ugh, the new testament in its world this is by it's huge uh, somebody on twitter remarked that um one of the ways to get your exercise it is by lifting this book to read it um it's intimidating both in its size and its its weight uh, lifting it like my arm is literally getting tired it's called the new testament in its world and it's by nt wright and michael bird they work together on it uh they're great scholars um, N.T. Wright is a, uh, he's a, a, a high up there um, Anglican. I believe Michael Bird is too. I don't want to assign him to something that's not his, but I think he has ties with the Anglican Church as well. Um, believe it or not, they're not all going to hell. Um, just because they're not our denomination doesn't mean they don't have a grasp of, of God's gospel. In fact, that's my thought for tonight is um, we talked about how Christians, very briefly we talked about how Christians don't have a monopoly on values and moral moral centers. Uh, our denomination doesn't have a monopoly on salvation. Um, if it required to get, if, if it was required to get everything right about salvation, uh, to understand every nook and cranny, to, uh, yeah, boy, I tell you, nobody would make it. Uh, thankfully, the Bible says he's come to seek and to save that which was lost. Uh, Jesus didn't desire that anybody should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And to be real honest with you, my I know that there's a lot of different faith traditions and a lot of different ways that people approach the cross. Um, but in my mind, and from what I read in the scriptures, the only people that we have the authority, so to speak, to write out of the, is the kingdom in our own minds, um, authority is not even the right word, but uh, if you were get it, if you were gonna get away with writing somebody out of the kingdom, you would write off those who were obstinate and rebellious and rejected Jesus Christ as king. You would write off those who blasphemed Jesus Christ. You would write off those who lived an immoral lifestyle inconsistent with the faith claim. You, you would, the Bible is full of examples like this where they say, nope, you name the name of Christ, but you don't live this way. Um, and, they would, and, there, and the scripture's full of examples of people who uh, didn't understand a lick about who Jesus was, what he came to do, but they had faith in Jesus Christ. And uh, I am confident and I am comforted by the truth that Jesus Christ saves all who will believe. C.S. Lewis uh, is a favorite of mine, and he said that faith is like, um, he said, mere Christianity is like entering into this foyer, this vestibule um, of, of, of salvation that Christ offers us. From there, there's a lot of different faith tradition, right? You know, you have your uh, big faith tradition over here, splinter faith tradition over here, other faith tradition over here, denomination. Um, and really, as long as they all center on salvation by grace through faith in Jesus Christ without any addition of our own works trying to merit our own salvation, um, then then I, I think it's very reasonable to say that uh, as long, that we're exhibiting true faith and dependence on the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross and the hope of the empty tomb. And even then, there's a lot of, um, there's a few larger religions out there that uh, their wording of their religion, their official documentation, uh, speaks of meriting salvation, it speaks of work, but I, have, I am comforted by the fact that a lot of modern adherents to some of these larger religions don't believe uh, like that. And I have brothers and sisters all around the world that are members of many faith traditions, and, uh, and they are 
saved by the grace of God, just like you and I. And you say, well, I want them all to be Baptists. Well, the Methodists want them all to be Methodists, and the Catholics want them all to be Catholics. Our job is to look at the scripture in the right context, in the right uh, uh, church history framework. We have to understand uh, that in the 21st century, we're probably not going to turn over a lot of rocks that haven't been turned over already. Um, and that we have to, our job is to read the scriptures, allow the scripture to speak to us as they were intended, and to follow Jesus Christ the best we can. Um, this is, this is why I'm Baptistic in my beliefs, because I, I do follow the scriptures pretty simply, and I don't give a, as much weight to church history and practice and evolution as I do um, the revealed scripture. My cat is trying to take both of my drinks. He's just, a, just an evil cat. I, I really like my cat, but my cat, I don't, my, there you go. My preference for my cat doesn't mitigate me calling it evil. All right, the shorter these things are, the more hits they get, and I want as many people as possible to see. This hasn't been a super funny one, but I do want to be faithful to my commitment and uh, see if I can be an encouragement and see if I can be a, a blessing and also see if I can get myself in trouble because I know four or five people are going to hear of this and be like, he's backsliding, he's compromising. Well, okay, I guess. If compromising means uh, drawing closer to Jesus Christ and the truth of the Word of God without the dogma and religion and tradition that's bagged us down for centuries, then okay, compromising, that's fine. All right. Hey, I hope you had an amazing Lord's Day, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. I've got actually a, a couple of fun ideas uh, for tomorrow's. And then, yes, we are going to talk about the COVID, COVID conspiracies. Conspiracy. And, uh, and uh, there may be something to them, you know, so we're going to take a look at it and see if there is or not. There's, there always seems to, I will say this, there always does seem to be at least a grain of truth to uh, most of these things. So we'll take a look at that tomorrow. All right. I love you. Have a wonderful evening. Oh, and by the way, y'all thought I was going. Um... I, I do have plans to uh, uh, make these better resolution. I have a couple other devices that have much better cameras, and so we're going to see if I can switch from using the laptop to using one of the newer devices to do these things on. I think that's going to work out really well. All right, have a wonderful night. This has been Minutes with Michael, with your host, Michael.